All right, guys, in this video today, we're going to be continuing to work on some oil leak problems on this 5.7 liter Vortec V8 on a 98 Chevy Cheyenne. We can see here what we got in the view is the oil filter adapter. This is a four wheel drive K2500 truck and we've got some oil seepage around the mounting bolts. We're nice and clean over where the oil cooler lines come in. So most of our problem is going to either be the ceiling around these bolts or the gasket where this mounts up to the block. In order to get this guy off, we're going to have to, uh, we're going to, have to remove the two oil cooler lines, the inlet and the outlet. And it's easier to take the oil filter off, spin that off and out of the way and then take these two 13 millimeter bolts off and then we'll be able to work this guy out. There's not a lot of room, but I think uh, doing that, uh, it'll fit. You uh, can time this around an oil change and it makes it a lot easier. You do not have to drain the oil to get this out, but when you take the filter off, of course, there's gonna be some oil coming out, so you're gonna need to have a pan ready. The first thing I'm going to do though is we're gonna start with these oil cooler lines. Let me see if I can move the camera into a better view so that you can see that better. And you can see where the oil cooler lines come into the oil filter adapter. And in order to disconnect them, what we've got to do is we've got to get these little rubber, um, I guess I'll call them a sleeve, off so that we can remove a clip that's on here. Just if I can zoom in here for a minute. Kind of move the camera so you can see what I'm talking about here. Right there. These little black guys here, these guys are going to have to be worked off and I'm going to have to get a longer screwdriver I think in order to fit that. If I can get this off without knocking the camera. Yep, it's going to come in from the top so you guys don't get nauseous. All right. I'm just got to get this guy worked back first. Now these haven't been taken off in a long time, so they're on there pretty stiff. Just gotta be patient with them. And there they go. So they'll slowly come off. And both of them are the same. I'm only gonna show this one. If I can come in from this side. And definitely, you know, get your eye protection on and don't be directly underneath this stuff. You're gonna have all kinds of dirt, crud falling off. Almost got it off all the way. There we go, all right. So now with this guy off and out of the way, we can see there's just like a little metal retaining clip on here. And to get that guy off, we're going to need a couple of different pick tools. Might just get a brush on here to get some of this debris off first. So that I can not have it falling all around me. Let me see, get some of that stuff out of the way so I can get a better view of this thing. Yeah, I'm going to get a little brush on here, guys, because I want to be able to get down directly on this. And I guess I want to move you a little bit over like this so you have a better view. Let's see if we can zoom this in anymore. Nope, as far as it goes. Let me pause this for a minute, clean it up, and then we'll work this clip out. All right, guys, we're all set here. Get this crud out of the way. Now we can get underneath here, get a better view. Whoops, sorry about that. Now we can see where the edge of this clip is. We're going to work it off. There we go. So we get our pick underneath here. That's the hardest part of this is to get the tool underneath the clip so that you can pop it off. Almost. There he goes. All right. And then 
we don't want him to go flying, so I might have to block your view for a second. Okay, so now we got that clip off. I'm going to kind of move it down out of the way of this transmission brace so you guys can see it. I don't think I'm going to be able to, though. Let's see if we can move the camera over. There we go. You guys can see there's our clip right there. All right, so we're just going to work this guy off. Whoop, there he goes. He worked himself off. And we're going to do the same thing on the other hose. Uh, the other coolant line and then we'll be able to pull those lines back out of the oil filter adapter all right guys now that we got both those clips off where the oil cooler lines can come out of the adapter now we're going to pull the oil filter off so for this we're going to get your pan into position hopefully you have yours all where you can get it off by hand Gonna move the uh, camera just a hair here so that it does not get hit by any oil. Manage not to hit the camera. That's the main objective of this part of the procedure. All right, so we're going to let this oil drain out here for a little while, and then we'll pull the two 13 millimeter bolts and drop the adapter. All right, guys, now we're going to come up here and we're going to pull out these two 13 millimeter bolts. Get our ratchet wrench. one now I'm gonna bump the camera for sure for a moment on this one We can reposition the camera here. Got one more bolt to take off. And again, we're going to kind of let this drain for a little bit because we have a lot. If we tilt down this way, we can see still have a lot of oil seeping out of the housing. We're going to let that run out a bit. And then we'll come back and pull it off. All right, guys, let's see if we can get these oil cooler lines to let go of the uh, housing here. Might have to grab a, a tool to get a hold of them with all this oil. But that's the last thing we've got here. If we can get them to let go, we can drop this adapter out. I want to be careful with these uh, little plastic covers so they don't get cracked in the process. All right, guys, with the pipes disconnected and the bolts out, I'm going to reshoot this one scene because we forgot to record removing this. So when this guy's sitting in like this, we got the oil filter off. What we're going to do is we're going to slide it up over the top of the drive shaft. I think we might want to pull this back like right here. You guys will get a better view that way. All right, so we're going to come over the top of the drive shaft and we're going to come down on this side 
the drive shaft, and that is how you get this little unit out. So now we can get this guy out and clean him up. The O-ring is still attached. The gasket broke up and fell out as we were trying to get everything disconnected. I wiped it off up here so you can see there's still some pieces of the gasket up there. If we zoom in. Yeah, the camera is just not cooperating with me, but you guys can see this black here. This is all broken off piece of gasket that we'll have to clean up before we reinstall everything. So we got to clean that up. We got to clean up the unit and then we'll go over the, the new parts so we can remount it. All right, just a quick view from the service manual, guys, um, for this particular truck. So they talk about having a 90 degree angle pick. I used a slightly different one, but it's the same deal. They show you over here about getting underneath and lifting out the clip. And of course, remember to discard the clip. You need to put a new one on. And then they talk about pulling it out. I find that you have to wiggle it to let it go. If you find it's really rusted in there, you, know, you might put some pliers with nylon teeth so you don't scratch it on here and just kind of lever it out. But in my case, it wiggled right out. And then they talk to you about putting the pin in, or the clip in, rather. And so what you're trying to do is those slots, after you get the yellow ring pushed in, you're trying to get these slots to line up with this curve, this curve, and this curve on the, on the clip. And, of course, they give you some instructions here in text. They show you another view here. Obviously, this is a lot easier when it's in your hand versus under the truck. And um, they talk to you about, uh, let's see, a couple other things you might find useful. Pushing in and removing the pipes. The clearance that you want to see before you push this uh, plastic cover over the clip. Here's another view here of it going in. Here's another view here after you've snapped the ring on to retain it. And then also they're telling you to make sure that this goes on all the way. Yes. Uh, and then we were able to push the black over it. That's another indication that that yellow paint, which I think here they're, they're showing indicated in black in these pictures, but we saw in the actual lines it's yellow. Uh, that's where you want to get that all the way in there so that you can actually see this through these slots. You'll see the yellow paint. I think that the only other thing they're showing here, you hear they mention that, they actually show, ensure that the yellow identification band on the tube is hidden within the quick connect fitting. A, yellow, a hidden yellow indication, excuse me, yellow identification band indicates proper joint sealing. So you definitely don't want to see it over here or something like that. And then uh, they, 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 if you happen to be changing the fittings, they mention what the torque is. We didn't change the fittings, but I'll show you that torque here in case you do. So that's it. Again, you know, you need to use new fittings. I think they mention actually, just for you guys that are doubters, I believe they make an explicit comment about, you know, like here I mentioned, they say discard the retaining ring clip. And then during installation, do not reuse the existing retaining clips removed from the cooler line connector fittings. So you have to have new ones so that the spring spring tension on there is, is good and tight. So anyway, I just thought I'd show you this. It comes out of the uh, 98 second edition service manual, which is fine for all these OBS GMT 400 type trucks. All right, guys, we've got our oil filter adapter nice and cleaned up. A little bit of a brass brush and some nylon brush along with some brake clean. Got this in, in, in good shape. Now, it doesn't have to be, you know, mint condition, but we do want to get it clean. We do want to get the old gasket material removed off of here. If the O-ring has gotten stuck or sealed in here, we want to get all that nice and clean as well. But while we're in here, we went ahead and cleaned everything else. This, of course, is the mating surface for the oil filter seal. And then, of course, we have our, our two cooler lines that go in here. And if you forget where they go, they're very clearly marked inlet and outlet right into the casting. So something I want to tell you about when you, when you get this off and you take the bolts off, a lot of times what will happen on these bolts, there's a sealing washer. If you zoom in here, a lot of times this sealing washer, this is part of what prevents leaks, a lot of times the sealing washer will end up getting stuck like that. And so if you notice when you take this off, there's like this raised piece. You want to make sure you take a 
a small tool and chip it off because it's actually this, cheap, this ceiling washer. So these are not reusable, right? You need to toss this. And unfortunately, it's not sold separately. You have to buy the whole piece from GM. It's not something you can pick up after market that I'm aware of. And so these two end up going in the recycle bin. And the part that you'll replace it with is, is a kit. This is the, uh, a GM 125. 53513, and it'll come with two of these, which is enough to do this, right? Got this kind of pre open so we can get this guy out. And what it'll have is it'll have a new one of these ceiling washers in it. And what this does, of course, is that if oil happens to creep up past the gasket and get past the threads, the idea here is you got one more chance to, to stop that leak with this little ceiling washer that sits right under the captive washer that's molded or rather cast right into the head of the bolt. So that's one thing you'll need. You'll need a pack of these. And like I said, they come in a pack of two. Now the GM dealer will sell you just one. So be sure you tell them you want the kit so that you get both. I'll put a link in the description for ordering these though. You can get them cheaper than on the dealer sometimes. And then we need to have the actual gasket and O-ring. And a lot of times these parts are listed wrong. So um, this, is the, this is the number that you need to use for the uh, small block Vortec V8s. This is for the 5.7 liter and for the 5.0 liter, 888-93990. And what this kit contains is one O-ring, rubber O-ring, that'll go in this groove area here, and one gasket that'll sit up here, and the bolts will go through and retain it. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to go place this gasket on top of here, place this O-ring on top of here. In fact, we'll do it right now. All right, so this guy's going to sit like that. And this guy's going to sit in this groove area that is specially cast out for him. And then as we install this, you want to be careful you don't damage this gasket. We'll use these bolts. right to help keep everything lined up as we put it back in so we'll install this guy we'll get him torqued down we'll install a new oil filter and and then we'll be ready to um, reconnect and, and put our retainers back into the cooling lines so let's go into the truck and get going with this last step all right guys we're going to get this unit fished back up while holding the bolts one of the things I didn't show in the previous clip that I did in between that and this is we do need to lubricate the new O-ring. So we put some oil on that right before we're doing this step to slide it into position. We will take another bolt. Get them fished up. Get our gasket started back through that bolt. All right, guys, once you get this up in a position where you can get both your fingers holding these bolts. You can take your other hand, verify that the gasket is in the correct position. You might have to move your lines. I got them kind of covered up here so they don't get any crud on them, but you can move them back out of the way until you get this guy up where he needs to be. Because until you do, they actually are going to be in your way. Gonna do one more check to make sure that gasket has the bolts lined up properly. And then we're gonna try to get them started by hand here. Now I know I'm completely blocking your view, but trust me, it's unavoidable. will see what I'm doing here just as soon as I can get it started just a little bit by hand where it'll hold itself in position. All right, there you go. 
So um, in case you missed that, because I had to clip part of it because we knocked the camera here a bit. Let's see if I can pull it back just a hair here. You know, you're going to be coming in with one hand on top of the drive shaft like this and then your other hand just right here. That's the best way to position everything so that you can, you know, get a twist going here with your hand, be able to twist this guy into position. And then we're just going to grab our 13 millimeter. I'm just going to get these guys tightened in. Sorry guys, there's just a lot of, not a lot of room under here at all, so I'm going to be knocking the camera trying to get this job done. I'm um, just going to be tightening this up by hand, just using the ratchet extension and the socket for now. Once we get it kind of tight and snug and I can move the camera out of the way, I'm going to come in here and torque this guy to 18 foot-pounds, drop the new oil filter on it, and then we'll connect the lines. So we're almost done. Again, just kind of moving it around, make sure it's settling in good, and then we'll snug it up to the 18 foot-pounds. All right, guys, another part that you're going to need here is this 157-24727. These are the little clips that are going to retain the pipes on the oil filter adapter. And when they're new in the bag, they kind of got like a blue sheen color to them. You can put these on the adapter before you install it, but I'm going to show you putting them on after we've got it installed. Then we're going to show, show that service manual technique where you kind of just roll them on with your thumb. So let's go ahead and get underneath and do that. All right, guys, you can see that we've got our new clip installed on the outlet line. We haven't pushed this one in yet, right? Just got it kind of sitting there. And one of the things I want to point out to you, so if I can bring this one down here just a little bit, you can see if we zoom in, hopefully you can see, there's a yellow paint band that'll be on the end of these. It'll be in the inlet and the outlet. And the idea is that after you get the clip in, you just push this guy in until you don't see the yellow. And the yellow end up disappearing underneath the slots where the clip is sitting in. Now I'm going to try to reposition this and show you me putting the inlet pipe clip in. Hopefully that's a good angle for you. So you've got three slots, right? So here's our new clip right here. And what we want to do with this clip is we want to get it inserted into the third piece right push it with our thumb and roll it around until it snaps in like that let me move the flashlight here so you can see a good view of how it is situated All right so now lots of shadows in here guys sorry maybe this view you can see it's sitting in not you know sitting right inside that top notch and then the two hooks are on the other notch and then if we take our inlet line, push them back just for a sec, get them lined up with that, we can again see that yellow paint mark. So I'm going to have a helper push the outlet line in here. Let's see if we can get a good view with the flashlight here of that one. All right, go ahead and push that in. Just kind of wiggle it. Push. You gotta give it a good hard push. There it goes. Now you see, heard it pop. That was it sliding in. So if we take a look at the inlet just to compare for a moment. Trying to get this where it'll rest where you can see it there. Maybe, yeah, like that, I like that. So we can see here, right here in the upper left, the inlet pipe. It's got a bit of a flare to it. And what'll happen is as you push it in, it'll push the clip out until the clip pops behind the shoulder and that's what locks it into position. 
All right, so since we got the outlet done, we can go ahead and slide this black cover over. And the other thing, if you remember from the service manual, we want to make sure that we don't see any gap. So now we're going to take our inlet pipe, position it. Let's see if we can get you guys any better of a view here. That's probably a better view. Yep. There's lots of shadows. Just give me a second, folks. Maybe that position of the light. All right, let's go ahead and push that inlet pipe in until it snaps. And then once you're sure that it has snapped into position, and you can tell that by the fact that you can't see the yellow anymore, and you can tell that also in a secondary way by when you try to put this clip on, it won't snap in flush with the, uh, the fitting. So as long as it snaps in flush with the fitting, you don't see any yellow and you heard it snap, you're done. All right, guys, that's it. I hope that helped you out in getting this type of job done. We're going to do some cleanup around all this area with some brake clean, get all this residual oil leakage out of the way, and hopefully this will fix our problem with this particular leak. We got a new O-ring. We got a new seal. Um, we've got this uh, oil filter adapter all cleaned up, as you saw. We've got a brand new oil filter over here. I think you can see them peeking out on the corner. AC Delco PF52E. I missed those PF52s, but they're not available anymore, so we had to finally go with one of those E-Core ones. Um, otherwise, I think we're done. If you got some questions, go ahead and leave it below. I'll try to help. If you found this useful or it saved you some time or money, or if you just learned something, please hit that like button. It really helps with the discovery of the video. And as always, thanks for watching.